So that's one of my little pet peeves is people bad-mouthing Wikipedia as a source. You know, the idea that it's not 100% infallible means that you can dismiss almost anything on Wikipedia. I mean, Wikipedia is a stunningly reliable source on almost anything. And if you really wanted to show that it was wrong, just show it's wrong, right? But people just tend to dismiss Wikipedia as, as not, not a good source. But not only is it a good source, it can actually lead to genuine science research projects. Um, so this is just one example that I, I started a couple of years ago. And it starts with something trivially simple. This is just the production, the industrial production of sodium metal. And the way that you do that is you get sodium chloride, that's just regular rock salt, which melts quite hot, your best part of a thousand degrees. So you melt that, and then you just pass electricity through it. And of course you get sodium at one electrode and chlorine at the other. So what you've got here is sodium is picking up a couple of electrons, and the sodium ions are picking up a couple of electrons and becoming sodium metal, and the chlorine negative ions, the chlorine anions, are dropping some electrons and becoming chlorine gas. Trivial. There is, and this is how the uh, melt conducts electricity. So this is the most simple electrolysis. There is really nothing else that can happen. So if we were to do this with cesium chloride, we would get exactly the same thing. You'd get cesium at one electrode and chlorine at the other, right? Well, if you actually read the wiki article on cesium, not unsurprisingly, when they first tried to make cesium, which is like uh, beginning of last, you know, 1900s, that sort of thing, um, that's exactly what they tried, because it's such an obvious thing to do, and such an obvious way to make elemental cesium. And this is what Wiki has to say about it. They tried to generate elemental cesium by electrolysis of molten cesium chloride, but instead of a metal, they obtained a blue homogeneous substance, which neither under the naked eye or under the microscope showed the slightest trace of metallic substance. Interesting. There's a result, they assigned it to a subchloride. I mean, this, this is where they drift off into, they didn't really have a clue what the hell was going on. Not surprising given the era that they were doing it in. And apparently they eventually got it to work using molten cesium cyanide, which melts much lower. But anyway, so this is a fascinating observation. Um, is it correct? So I decided I'm gonna get some cesium chloride and electrolyze it, see what happens. So the reason I've got it in this little YouTube type thing is to keep the electrodes separate so I keep the generation of this blue solution or this, this cesium, whatever it is, separate from the chlorine because those things will react really quite violently if they come into contact. Plus it would obscure the clarity of the experiment. That's why it's all done in this little YouTube thing. And there is the slight problem that the difference in temperature between when this stuff melts, which is about 600, 700 degrees, and when the glass softens, which is only a couple of hundred degrees higher than that, is kind of tricky with something as small. There we go, that's it. How's that then? Isn't that fucking superb? There we go, that's it. How's that then? Isn't that fucking superb? That's a winner. Right, I'm just going to leave that to solidify there. That is absolutely outrageously fantastic. Ah, <sighs> and it's still there, and it's still there, and it's still there. Ah, oh, there's crystallizing. And it's crystallized. It's crystallized blue. Right, Let's see if that survives till tomorrow. So what is it? I'm not entirely certain. It's probably a variant on solvated electrons. So these are just sort of electrons that are sat there in solution. You get them in liquid ammonia at minus 30 minus 50, that sort of thing. 
That there is not a water solution. That's liquid ammonia, which is something that you more might expect to find on Uranus or Neptune, but not on Earth. And dissolved in it is metallic lithium, which gives solvated electrons. It's actually just free electrons sitting there in the ammonia that's giving this solution its blue color. It's so cold that what with the heat capacity of ammonia, it would give you much worse cold burns than liquid nitrogen. <laughs> Trust me on that, I got some. And in this case, it's so dilute that it's about 1,000th of a gram of lithium dissolved in all of that ammonia. But this isn't cold. This is almost at 1,000 degrees. So what the hell's going on here? still don't have a good answer. But it's just one of those fascinating things, just a little background reading on Wiki, and you come across an idea, uh, an observation that is over a century old. It's still actually really quite interesting. So show the electrons a little love and give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you thought this was awesome, because I've got lots more footage of this. I, I did so many experiments on it. Still don't understand what's going on here though.